The bottom line is £8,600 for the basic spec F750GS. That bike has manual preload and damping adjustment on the rear shock absorber, cornering abs, dynamic traction control, two riding modes and the TFT display common to all BMWs this year. From 2020 all BMWs above 400cc also come with a tracker fitted as standard too. The first year subscription is included. After that the owner can either pay the subscription themselves or leave the tracker dormant. Heated handlebar grips. A quick shifter and LED headlight. There are other option packs available including electronic suspension adjustment, center stand, cruise control, luggage and sat nav preparation. Making it all too easy to end up with a budget bike that just cost you £12,000. If you have the self-control to resist we'd suggest the basic bike plus heated grips or the Tay model if you can get a good deal. And because BMW don't sell many basic versions, chances are if you ask to buy one the waiting time will be so long that a smart dealer will offer you a good deal on the Tay model anyway. I really wish we could get away from our obsession with power figures because increasingly, now so many bikes have so much of it, they no longer reflect how fast a bike will feel. There's no point having 200 bhp if it all lives above 9000 revolutions per minute and your riding style is to change up at 8000 revolutions per minute. It's easy to look at the BMW spec sheet and scoff at the 77 bhp peak figure. Your loss because on the road especially in the dynamic riding mode, the way this motor uses all of its 60 pound-feet of torque and smart choice of gear ratios to punch out of corners between 8000 revolutions per minute feels stronger than the KTM 1290 I've been riding for much of this year, stronger than Triumph Street Triple and much, much stronger than Yamaha's already amazing MT-07 or MT-09 for that matter. Where the F750GS motor loses out is that it doesn't rev that high and so power drops off around 8500 revolutions per minute, but by that time you've changed up a cog and in the top couple of gears you are already going faster than you need to. Like the F700GS before it, which used a detuned version of the old 800cc motor. This new F750 is actually 853cc, we never understood it either, but clearly the Germans do have a sense of humor. This heavily revised, parallel twin engine, launched in 2018 is very different from the old F800 motor. The dummy third piston that smoothed out the vibes in the old motor has been replaced with dual balancer shafts and the exhaust has been moved from the left to the right hand side. From a rider perspective it's the advances in fueling technology and ignition that are most obvious, the different riding modes really perk up the power delivery, making the throttle response noticeably sharper and delivering the bike's 77 bhp in a manner that makes it feel like much more. BMW twins of the last 10 years, whether in a parallel or boxer layout have a distinct personality, they pick up revs very quickly like the pistons were made of race-grade titanium and there's a lovely, buzzsaw, aggressive rasp that you feel through the throttle. The other thing this motor does really well though is the more laid-back stuff, where big twins can be a bit chuggy through town or cruising at motorway speeds, the middleweights tend to be smoother and a bit perkier too at low speeds nipping in and out of traffic. Again it's BMW's superb fueling and throttle response that makes the difference here. Sadly the price you pay for an engine that punches so far above its weight is that fuel consumption in loopy mode reminds you that shifting a certain amount of weight at a certain velocity requires a certain amount of energy. Having said that, 52 mpg on the back roads isn't too bad considering the way it was being ridden. In more typical use the F750's figures are pretty much the same as the F850GS. Over the full test period it averaged 57 mpg with a best of 65 mpg on a motorway run. The chassis is the same as the F850GS with a seat height of just 815 mm and standard suspension as simple, 
but effective with minimal adjustment. Front forks are very different from the long travel upside down items on the F850GS, but all the better for it on the road. At 224 kilograms, it's a whopping 40 kilograms heavier than Yamaha's MT-07 and only 5 kilograms lighter than the F850GS, but it feels more compact and easier to throw around than the F850 and as nimble in the corners as an MT-07. That's impressive. Steering geometry is relatively lazy as is the wheelbase so it seems odd but reassuring to see a steering damper fitted above the bottom yoke. Our test bike had the optional ESA electronically adjusted suspension pack which has two modes road and dynamic. Road has softer spring rates and damping settings for comfort, but also controls the suspension surprisingly well on twisty back roads. Dynamic is the sportier setting, but I found it a bit too harsh on the bumpier back roads, you can set the suspension settings independently of the riding modes and I found road suspension with dynamic engine mode to be the best overall setting. The Brembo twin piston calipers are the same as fitted to the F850GS, but they seem to work better on the F750 with more immediate bite. Maybe it's because on the bigger GS the extra fork travel soaks up some valuable microseconds of stopping or maybe BMW has fitted different pads. Whatever the reason the F750GS brakes with more confidence and precision than the bigger bike. 